Hey, it's David at PDF Automation Station. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up our customizable dynamic stamp, the one with 10 fields. There's also 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 fields. But this one is the most with 10 fields. Page 1, instructions just on how to set up the stamp and where to install it. And then some setup here. Page two, some more setup with colors and borders, alignment, things like that. Page three is the actual stamp and there's nothing there. So we haven't set anything up yet. This heading field is optional and that's just the heading on the stamp. I'll call this one approved. And if I go down to page three, you'll see it approved. These are the field descriptions. There's 10 of them. These will be on the stamp itself, as well as in the pop-up dialog when the stamp is applied. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste all these from my clipboard to save some time here. And if you don't know how I'm doing this, I wrote an article on Substack and I'll link to that in the description. Just about done here, setting up the field descriptions. Okay, there's my descriptions and they're right justified. I can make it left if I want to. And again, if I go down to the stamp portion, I'll see here what it looks like so far. I'm going to turn that back to right. Next, each field has a type. And if you select this drop down, you'll see lots of different field types. First one I'm going to select is auto date. And when you select any kind of date field, the format field appears. And this is the default. You can put any date, time, format you want. I'm going to change that. So this format is the full month, the day, the year, the hour, minutes, and TT is AM or PM. Project number, I'll just put free text, and that just means the user can type whatever they want in there into the pop-up when they apply the stamp. Vendor, I'm going to select pop-up. So these are the three most common types of fields. When you select a pop-up, you'll get this set items button. And that's for copying and pasting a list into there. Or you could type it in manually and just uh, put a new line for each item. So I just copied that. I'll go back here, click set items, paste. Looks like I already had it in there. You can add uh, You can add them manually or just paste from an Excel sheet. If I click that again, you'll see them all in there. The next three fields, I'm just going to make them free text. And approved by, I'm going to pull the name from the Adobe identity under edit preferences. 
So if you go down here, you'll see all the different options for Adobe Identity. And there's name. Anything that has OO in brackets, that means there's an option to override for the end user. If you don't want the user to be able to override that by typing into the field, then don't select the one with the OO, which I'm going to do here. Now I'll pull in something else from the Adobe identity, which is the email address. In this case, I'm going to leave. I'm going to use the OO so the end user can override that email address. Last two, I'm going to do date pickers or pop-up calendars. I believe there's eight different ones. Four are English. That's what EN is. The rest are French. And then you can decide on the calendar the first day of the week. So week start, you do either Sunday or Monday. I'm going to do Sunday, and I'm going to leave that format as a default. You don't put a time format on a pop-up calendar, only on a, any of the other dates. Do another English, another start the week on Sunday, but this time the option to override, and I'll leave that format the same. So that's it for setting up the fields and the types of fields. Here you could set up the background color. It could be transparent. I don't recommend that because everything will show through it. This is actually white, so I'm going to, uh, I'll show you. It's white, see? We can use any color, though. Just right-click the circle, select Properties, go into Fill Color, and any color on this color picker you can use for the background. I use this very light gray. After I do that, I'll click set color. Even though that's already checked, I still have to, to click that. And now you see my background color. There's no border, so I can set a border color here. I'm going to make that red. If I wanted to change it, I right click properties and change the fill color. Now set color. And it's on medium, so we should have a medium red border now. And there it is. Stamp text color, that's already red. That is all of this text. And the stamp font, I have it set at bold. I can go regular, and that's what it looks like. Or back to bold. This is the stamp text alignment. We already have it at right. This is just a second place that lines up with this. So you can go left or right. We have it here as well, so you can see it move and what it looks like. Field text color, I have that set at blue right now. You can right click properties, fill color, and Pick any color you want in here. But right now it's blue. And that's going to be this text that fills in when the stamp's applied. If you want to see it, these are fillable fields. So you can just start typing and you'll see that it's blue. And you can change the font of that to, to uh, regular or bold, like that. So that's it for this video. The stamp's all set up. Actually, let's go ahead and save that and apply the stamp from the menu. The category is PDF Automation Station Stamps. This is the 10 field one. So there's my date and time. 
it's grayed out because there was no option to overwrite project number. I could put in whatever I want. Vendors, that list that we pasted. So I can pick something there. PO number, put something else in there, amount. AP number. There's my name pulled from the Adobe identity. It's grayed out because I didn't select option to override. There's my email. I can override that if I want to. And here's my two date pickers. Just click um, calendar. Select your date in the format that we set on the stamp. And by the way, those stamp settings, you only have to do that once unless you need to change it. Once that's set and saved, your stamp will be like this all the time with these descriptions and these field types. Here's another calendar. We can go forward to 2025, forward on the date, on the month, I mean and select your date. You can override this, but that option's really kind of irrelevant on the calendar because in either case, you can just click it again, change the date. I'm gonna go to stamp settings now just to show you there's some additional settings. These can be changed on the fly as you're applying the stamp. Um, I'm gonna show you those in a in another video but here's the settings we have transparency you can go between 20 and 100 percent 100 percent means it's not transparent at all you can reduce that by clicking the this arrow we have a size percentage some other things here I can apply the stamp right now, right here, or I can go back to this window and do it. So let's just apply that stamp. And that's it for this video. That's how that works. I'll see you on the next one and we'll go over those other settings. Thanks for watching.